Alright, so we're checking out the only game where atomizing billions of people is a fairly common occurrence. It's Universe Sandbox 2. This is the Earth. The Earth is happy because Canada is usually cold and Florida man is usually pulling 12 inch knives out of the skulls of alligators. But in 2029, apparently the Earth may be sad. Realistically, it's, it's supposedly there's gonna be a 340 meter asteroid that's gonna be coming pretty close. It probably won't hit us because nothing cool ever happens to the Earth. But here, I would like to find out exactly what would happen if it hit and then reduce the size of the asteroid and increase its speed to see what the smallest possible asteroid that will still kill everyone on Earth would be. We're not constrained by normal mortal physics in Universe Sandbox 2. We can absolutely make things go way past the speed of light. Now scientists have said that the asteroid would absolutely destroy all of us if it hit at 340 meters, and I'm inclined to take their their word for it. But it's Universe Sandbox too. I mean, we gotta at least see. So the asteroid's gonna be moving about uh, a nice cool 40,000 kilometers per hour. Fairly, fairly small in comparison to the ridiculous crap you can do in Universe Sandbox 2. End of Florida, man. All right, so here's end of Florida, man. 340 meters moving 25, around 25,000 miles per hour. Will it be enough to destroy and evaporate the amount of Bud Light sitting within the Florida man's veins? I'm kind of wondering how good my luck is as well because almost every time I shoot an asteroid at the Earth, it either lands on Australia or Florida. Not today though, damn it. Okay. So, end of Florida man, starting to get a uh, little evaporation of the oceans that also kind of, you know, exists in the realm of not a good time. Uh, but that said though, the molten sadness isn't really expanding that far. So, I mean, maybe it won't be that bad. Ah, Earth has a couple scars in it, but other than that, it's garbage. Clearly, we need to make this thing move a little bit faster. I'm telling you, if, if the Earth is not completely wreathed in flame, I can't count it. Now, I'm sure that the the climate and whatever else is all jacked up, but we I'm a visual person, so I need to see my wreath of flame. All right, let's try 80,000 kilometers per hour. All right, hoping to warm up Canada with this one. Got it going 80,000 kilometers per hour. Here we- The fuck? The fuck did I do? I don't know what the fuck I just did there. <laughs> Okay, we got warming up Canada, 340 meters, moving about 80,000 kilometers per hour. Maybe this will do the appropriate amount of damage. Every, it seems to be Africa every single time. I don't know what it is about Africa. It's just really attracting asteroids today. Nope, barely a little dent. You know what? We're gonna have to jack up the speed a bunch. This isn't working. There. 400,000 kilometers per hour. Will Fortnite be enough to ruin the world? Go get him, Fortnite. Make me friggin' proud. I'm sorry again, Africa. I'm not doing this on purpose, okay? It just, you just always seem to be in the way, that's all. Whenever it takes a second for the giant crater to show up on the Earth, that's almost always a really bad sign. Again, just a small hole in the Earth. Screw this, we're going to light speed. Light speed is my go-to ending of the world speed for basically anything in Universe Sandbox 2. I knew we were going to be here eventually. When you're dealing with light speed, you got to move time real slow. See, now when you already have a dent and it's only been a millisecond, that's when you know you're going to get some damage. How you doing there, Earth? I don't feel so good. Fantastic. We're finally getting somewhere. Go ahead and... uh speed things up a little bit. Oh yeah. See, light speed is the answer to everything. This is where we should have started. Now we can really see how small we can make an asteroid and still completely obliterate the Earth. On a side note here, Florida Man is gonna be able to survive for at least a couple of seconds before the gigantic ripple of fire reaches him. I kind of wanna sit over by Australia just to see if somehow it manages to repel the growing crater of death. 
I think the craziest thing about this is that it's only been a couple of seconds and you already know what's going to happen. Go ahead and speed things up just a little bit more. 19 seconds per second. So again, it's not very long, but you can already see everything turning to molten lava. What's crazy is how far the uh, the snow was wiped away from the impact. You can see the curve of the snow having gotten melted away the second this thing hit, and now how far the oceans evaporate from the epicenter. Last to survive is going to be Japan. So your top 10 anime deaths are going to be the last thing the Earth ever sees before it is engulfed in a giant flowing floor is lava level destruction event. All right, we'll go ahead and speed things up the rest of the way here. Oh, that's interesting. The shockwave continued to move through the planet, but I think that the fire is, uh, is, is subsiding. I mean, I say subsiding. The fact that half of the earth is red with flame probably means that everyone ends up dying. 340 meters is insta death. Earth was not meant to take something as long and hard as Fortnite. What about only 34 meters? One light speed, 34 meters. There's something else that ruined the universe. Anthem. Bring this down to 34 meters. Will Anthem be enough to cover the world in regret? Survey says probably. Because again, we're getting a giant lava flow from the middle of the ocean. It's definitely not as bad. Like, you know how before there was a giant ring of fire? This time there's like a much smaller ring of fire. So I think everyone may be okay. Thus, we have to do this at 10 times the speed of light. That said, that's a, that's a really deep hole right there. <laughs> Apex Legends, but with more loot boxes. All right, Apex Legends, if you're not killing everyone on Earth, you're not doing your friggin' job. 10 times light speed. Go, my son. There it is, streaking through the night sky. We're at like one billionth of an MS per second or something like that. So it's barely a measurable amount of time. But now we can go ahead and start speeding things along and see if the damage to the great blue, oh, this time we, we landed pretty close to Japan. Sorry, Japan, you got off easy the last time, right? What do you want? Okay, I don't even think that that's where it originally landed, but you know what? We're not even within the confines of physics at this point. So, 10 times light speed, whatever. I kind of expected this to happen, but I'm somewhat impressed to see the Earth still in one piece. If we look from this position, we're going to notice a very large pimple forming on the right side of Earth's face. I feel like the flame wave is much more powerful this time, too. I also feel like the destruction of a 34 meter asteroid moving at 10 times the speed of light did more damage than a 340 meter asteroid moving at just the speed, well, just the speed of light. The speed of light. Actually, that's probably pretty accurate. It's like the exact same amount of damage. Florida is unscathed. <laughs> That's crazy. It is like a perfectly symmetrical line of insta death. All right, let's do a 3.4 meter asteroid moving at 100 times the speed of light. Light speed was never meant to travel with only one or two zeros. So soon we'll be going to 1000 light speed. I'm aiming for Florida this time. All right, 3.4 meters of free healthcare coming at the Earth at 100 times the speed of light, specifically at Florida at 100 times the speed of light. Was free healthcare a good idea? Will Florida be happy with everything that we will give them on this day? If, it may, if it's any consolation, Florida, it landed in the ocean. So, you know, that'll probably help out a little bit. Or not. Could also not help out. There goes Florida. Florida went pretty quick. It's pretty impressive to see something that's, you know, 3.4 meters now, creating a crater that is bigger than our 34 meter 
asteroid. I always saw that thing online about the grain of sand. I don't know. I mean, we have infinite light speed, so it's possible we'll be able to destroy the Earth with a grain of sand. It just may take a lot of light speed. Donald Trump is like, Gray, that is not the wall I was talking about. Once again, half of the Earth basically gets immediately vaporized, which basically is, you know, that's it's enough to call it a complete cataclysmic event. I know someone's like, ah, it's just America, Gray, it's no big loss. Listen, Canada went too, all right? This one's for you, Australia. All right, we're heading straight for 10,000 times light speed. This is only gonna be 3.4 centimeters. I think technically this would just evaporate before it ever reached Earth, but it's it's just for fun. It moved so fast that I didn't even see what happened, even at this speed. I had to turn it into a bowling ball too, because for some reason the game wouldn't recognize a 3.4 centimeter asteroid. 10,000 times light speed is shaking the fabric of reality at only 3.4 centimeters. I know someone's going to be able to tell me exactly how many like friggin' megatons of TNT that is at 10,000 light speed. But for right now, everyone in, in Australia is, actually they're probably just getting a tan, honestly. Australians can live through pretty much anything. There's nothing I've done in any game that has managed to kill Australia. So this doesn't count. We have to wait until it goes to the rest of the planet. Okay, that was a lot more damage than, oh crap, is right about where it was gonna be. Okay, so it's always about halfway. I keep thinking that eventually we're gonna get to a realm where it engulfs the entire earth. You know what, screw it, let's just go one million times light speed. There's no real point in slowing time down enough because it's not gonna matter at that speed. There's been grains of sand. This is a grain of sadness. I think it said that a grain of sand is only four grams. Moving at one million times the speed of light. What's interesting is there is a line of light that has driven itself through the earth where the one million light speed grain of sadness went. I'm kind of afraid to turn this time stoppage off. God, the, the light is still there. Nothing really seems to be happening to the Earth. Okay. Uh, so I, off camera, I tested a million times light speed and it wasn't impressive enough. So I did it 100 million times light speed. Uh, the grain of sand is breaking part of the Earth off. Like, <laughs> I didn't even have it moving time-wise and this had already happened. Let us, um, oh God. So let's go ahead and see how much damage a grain of sand could legitimately do, especially when it has somehow managed to force matter to either come into existence or raise off the surface of the earth. Let me go ahead and uh, speed this along a little bit here. The initial impact seems pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Seems pretty goddamn bad. Oh, Jesus. The Earth has been engulfed in mist. Is this because the Earth is evaporating? Yes. The Earth is evaporating, I do believe. Go ahead and uh, speed time up here. The surface of the Earth is also 312 degrees Celsius right now. Oh, the Earth doesn't exist anymore. It's just a cloud of gas now. Oh, no, wait, there it is. It still exists. It's being engulfed, but it exists. This is the souls of everyone on Earth leaving in one big cotton ball. Oh. There you go. Could a grain of sand destroy the Earth? Yeah. It, it's got to move pretty fast. And by pretty fast, I mean 100 million times the speed of light. But when it hits, it is going to screw Earth up. And by screw Earth up, I mean it's going to drive the Earth straight out of the solar system. Well, folks, hope you enjoyed this episode of Universe Sandbox 2. Don't piss off a grain of sand moving at 100 million times the speed of light. Until the next time, folks, stay foxy and much love.